Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, Me, 33M. With my wife, 33F, of nine years, she cheated, and I'm gone. Here is the short version of the last seven months. Happily married, no kids, both professionals. My job requires a good bit of travel, which is not a big deal since her job forces her to work 80 plus hours a week. We are both very busy, but her much more than me. A few things didn't add up last September so based on the advice on Reddit, the investigating began. It took me a long time to figure out what was going on because she was excellent at covering her tracks. Around November, all of the pieces came together, and outside help was brought in to help me get all my ducks in a row. An attorney was hired and so was a private eye. In January, everything was confirmed 100% by the pie and that was all the proof that I needed. After much thought, today is the day that everything ends. I have been planning it since the visual confirmation earlier this year. She is being served at her office today at 4 p.m. Based on conversations she has had with me and conversations she has been having with the other guy, there is no way she has any idea that this is coming from me. It will be a shock, but certainly not a surprise. The divorce will be very simple since we earn about the same amount of money and don't have a ton of stuff. The truck is in front of the house, and it is now loaded. I am moving out of state. It doesn't matter where I live since I am in sales and my territory is half of the United States. The furniture that is going with me are the pieces that were given to me by my family when we married. She can have everything else, and she is going to be keeping three quarters of it anyway. I am driving the truck myself and can't wait to get to my new condo and start a brand new life. My last six months have been pure hell. Here is the question and I think I already know the answer but would love to hear your opinions. Her other guy is a co-worker at the law firm. He is early 50s with a wife and three daughters. They don't appear to work in the same department, and he is not her boss. By all appearances, he has a great family and a great life. Do I contact his wife as I am leaving town? Would you want to know? Am I just being spiteful? Edit. She got the papers. Phone calls and texts non-stop for the last 15 or so minutes. Her sister and mother have phoned me as well. I have not responded to any of them. Also, I am moving from a large city in the northeast to Florida. Trying to get to South Carolina tonight and then to my final stop tomorrow. I am stopping for gas and coffee right now and I really appreciate all of the kind words. Edit number 2. I am still on the road but getting closer to my new home. Last night was very interesting. I did not speak with her or text her. I did speak on the phone with my mother and her sister. My words were very careful and thought out to her sister as I would expect her to hang up the phone with me and tell her everything. Talking to my mom was not easy. It is a humiliating situation to discuss with your family. My mom gave me 100% support and is coming to visit me next weekend at my new place. Moms are the best. I will get settled in and update everything in a couple of days. I have decided to not contact the boyfriend's wife. I could change my mind down the road, but for now, no contact with her as planned. Looking forward to starting new. A user in the comments said, as much as I admire the stone cold walk away, if you had any sort of positive relationship with her mother I'd call her back and just thank her for being in your life, tell her that you have 100% proof of an ongoing affair and then wish her and her family well and hang up. That'll burn. Another user said, hell, yeah you do. The wife deserves to know just like you deserve to know what kind of person you were married to. Don. T looks at this as you are breaking a marriage up. They did that. They own it. I would hate to be in a situation where I thought I was putting all my efforts into a loving and loyal relationship all the while I was getting screwed over. Tell her. The next one is titled, Update, Me, 33M. With my wife, 33F, of 9 years, she cheated, and I'm gone. I got into my new place Friday evening and got unpacked and settled in on Saturday. 
It is very strange to be starting over again, but it is the right thing to do. Thank you for all of your encouragement and your questions. Here are some answers. There was never a response by me to my soon-to-be ex-wife. Her calls and texts went unanswered, and they eventually stopped yesterday morning. The last one she sent said that she will sign the papers and grant me the divorce, wow, thanks. There was some conversation between her sister and me. We had a brief guarded phone call Thursday night and then a long and very helpful follow-up on Saturday. While she wants to protect her sister, she understands exactly why I did what I did and does not blame me for it. After the call, there doesn't seem to be any hostility towards me, and I am grateful for that. Based upon many of your suggestions, the other guy's wife will have to remain in the dark from me. Leaving the situation for me means not staying involved. Now, if she called me up and wanted to know what was going on, I would tell her everything. No hesitation at all. Here is the hard part. How did I catch her? Last summer, there were some subtle changes in her behavior and each one of these by itself is no biggie, but as a group they bothered me. She started drinking more, it went from one drink of wine, once a week to nearly every night. There were a couple of times where she lost her cool over little things that tend to happen in life. Blowing up at a waitress, guy on the metro, kid at Chipotle, etc. She was never like that before. There was a night where she yelled at her parents on the phone and hung up on them which was way out of character for her. But here is the one that set this all in motion. At a wedding last fall, one of our college friends was there and recently divorced. The friend was lonely and feeling terrible about herself. My wife suggested that someone should sleep with her to get her confidence back and that she was alright with it if it was me. Needless to say, I was stunned and would never do anything like that. That night while lying in bed, the only reason that I could think of to make her say that was that she was fooling around and looking for a way to ease her guilt. And I was right. It just took me a while to piece together what was going on. As stated earlier, the guy is an older man who works for the same firm as her. For a while, they were meeting during the day at different hotels around town. When I was out of town, she was hosting him in our home. They used our guest bedroom, which did not occur to me for almost six weeks. After establishing how they communicated, burner phone, hidden in her car, and where they were meeting, our house mostly, it was easy for me to gather all the evidence that would make it easy for me to file papers. Thank you to a lawyer and a private eye. With a pie, you can hear and see everything in graphic detail. There were a lot of tears shed by me when confronted with the blunt reality of what was happening and what we are being said about me to him and what was happening in my own home. However, as many of you have pointed out, she is the one in the wrong and I can hold my head up high knowing that I did the right thing. Oh well, I hope that answers some questions. The next one is titled, I, 24M, made out with my girlfriend's, 22F, friend. I feel horrible and I don't know what I should do now. My girlfriend and I have been together for two years. We have our ups and downs but there is no doubt in my mind that she's the one for me. I messed up big time though. A few days ago, an acquaintance of mine sent me a snap of herself at 1 am. I had no idea why that girl did that, I barely even knew her. Anyway, naturally my girlfriend didn't like this and she understandably flipped out and accused me of cheating on her. At first, I tried explaining to her that I have no idea what's going on or why this girl was sending me snaps at 1 am, but I was upset that she was accusing me of cheating even though I hadn't done anything yet. So, I handled the situation terribly. I got mad at her even though after I calmed down I realized that she had every right to doubt me considering the situation. Anyway, she was so upset she ended up kicking me out of the apartment. So, I went to my friend's place to spend the night there. My friend was having a little get-together at his place with some of our friends that night. There were like seven people already there, including one of my girlfriend's best friends. When I got there, she started talking to me. I guess she was seventh wheeling before I got there, and I kinda, after a lot of drinks, ended up venting to her about what had just happened and also other stuff that I had been going through, which turned into her also venting to me about things that have been happening to her. 
The conversation got really deep and emotional. We were drunk and upset, not excuses, and one thing led to another and we kinda made out. It lasted a few minutes but then I stopped it and went to sleep. The next day I talked to my girlfriend about the girl on Snap again and I explained that I barely know this girl and have no idea why she'd send me that. My girlfriend did some snooping and some asking around but finally believed me. She said she'd take my word that there is nothing going on between me and that girl on Snap as long as I block her, which I did. So, I feel like if I tell her what happened with her friend she's 100% gonna be convinced that I cheated on her before. Not to mention that her friend, the one that I made out with, is begging me not to tell my girlfriend what happened. She says she was really drunk and lonely and didn't mean for it to happen. I really don't know what to do here guys. I feel like crap for doing what I did and hiding it. I've never cheated on anyone before, and I never thought I'd ever do something like that. I definitely screwed up here but I'm wondering if anyone has any advice for me on how I can fix this mess. Thanks in advance. A user in the comments said, come clean. Your soon to be ex-girlfriend deserves to know. Not only does she deserve to know that you cheated on her, but she also deserves to know that her so-called best friend stabbed her in the back. Tell her everything and let her make her own decision on if or how to move forward. Another user said, this sounds awfully vindictive to me, and whether she's the one for you, or not, this is not an action that indicates respect. Tell her, because she'll find out anyway. You don't want to be a cheater and a liar. Also, not for nothing, you're more worried about this making her think that you cheated on her with Snapchat girl than you are about the fact that you actually cheated on her with her friend. You think that she won't break up with you for one incident of cheating but two would end it? Come on now. The next one is titled, Update, I-24M, made out with my girlfriend's, 22F, friend. I feel horrible and I don't know what I should do now. So, shortly after my first post I decided to come clean to my girlfriend about what I did. But before doing that I had to get concrete evidence that I wasn't lying to her about the girl on Snap because I knew she'd have a hard time believing that I was actually telling the truth about that considering everything that happened. We've got a mutual friend who knows that girl and they confirmed that the girl on Snap didn't know I had a girlfriend and was just randomly shooting her shot. Not concrete evidence but I figured it might help my credibility to have multiple people confirm that there's nothing going on with that girl. The mutual friend even told me that the girl is willing to call my girlfriend and apologize to her but idk I'm worried that might not be a good idea. Anyway, my girlfriend's friend, the one I made out with, kept begging me not to tell her, but I realized that if she had made out with one of my friends I'd want to know about it. So, I told my girlfriend what happened. I told her how much I loved her and that the last thing I'd ever want to do is hurt her. I told her that I can't believe I did something like that and swore I would never do it again. She cried and threw stuff at me, hit me a few times and asked me if I was lying to her about the girl on Snap as well. I let her know that that's not the case and told her everything I mentioned earlier. She stormed out saying don't talk to me anymore we're done for good, and I spent the night crying. The next morning, she came back and said that if it truly didn't mean anything and if I swear to never do something like that again, then we could work it out and move on. She also said that she believes me when I say nothing happened with the girl on Snap. Which I have to admit. I didn't see coming. Naturally she's still pretty upset, and I know that this is gonna be a long process of rebuilding trust but I'm willing to put in the work. All in all it seems like everything worked out. The one negative is that my girlfriend is gonna cut her friend out of her life. She didn't like the fact that her friend didn't want me to tell her what happened. Anyway, for now I've decided to start sharing my location with her and leaving my phone unlocked and stuff like that to help rebuild trust. I'm gonna try to be a better boyfriend from now on. Thanks to everyone for making me realize that hiding something like that won't work out in the long run. The next one is titled, how can I get my grandma, 91F, to stop bringing up and lamenting the fact that I, 34M, no longer speak to my lying, cheating dad, 62M. My grandma is an amazing person. She's 91 but sharp, healthy, and generally very pragmatic. When my parents split up when I was a baby, 
She actually lived with us for a while. She's always been like a mother to me. When both of my parents weren't there and I was 18, she gave me a room at her house, let me borrow her car until I got a job, let me use her cell phone, and would regularly make me meals. S. He is smart and wise and kind and just all around one of my three favorite people in the world, with my wife and daughter being the other two. But she's got a blind spot when it comes to my dad. He's her youngest and he has done the most for her. She has gone through some financial issues, and no one has helped her as much as him. We all do help out one of my sisters mows her lawn, I deposit money into her account every month, etc. But dad has done the most. T. Oh be fair, she has blind spots for one of my cousins and I too. She has only ever yelled at me once, and I deserved it was 18 and drank a six pack of beer then puked on her carpet and passed out. My dad and I were once close, despite some very manipulative and controlling behavior on his part. He married Carrie, 63F, when I was 13 and she was amazing. J. Ust a genuinely good person. I cannot think of anything I can criticize her on. She took on three step kids and, no matter what, always treated us extremely well. S. He treated my dad well. I had never seen my dad so happy as when he was with her. He was convinced she was his soulmate. Carrie is giving, funny, kind, absolutely beautiful, looks 40 still and is very fit, and the best cook. Every single person in the family loves her. I remember being glad that my parents divorced so that dad could meet Carrie. Well, a couple of years ago he met Tina, 38F. He began an affair and eventually moved out telling Carrie that he just needed some time to think. I begged him to come clean with her and her a divorce instead of leaving her wondering WTF is going on. He wouldn't. So, I told her. And I told her that my siblings and I are here for her, always. We have kept in touch with her, and we still see her as our stepmom. My dad has continued to suck. Seemed to completely forget that my daughter exists. Failed to make his yearly trip up because of work yet took a vacation at the same time with Tina. Followed shortly thereafter by another trip with her. Ignored my daughter's calls. Forgot our birthdays, etc. I finally told him that as long as he's with Tina, he will not have a relationship with me. My sister talks to him still, but only superficially. As a side issue, this girl is very much part of one political party, he tends to be of the other party, and since being with her, I've heard quite a bit more misogynistic and racist BS that came straight from her. He actually once said, in complete seriousness, that white men have it the hardest in our country. My grandma knows about this, and she was very disappointed in my dad at first, but now she gets in arguments with my sister and me about how he's an adult and we have to let him live his life and we can't judge him. She keeps trying to get me to speak to him again. Martyr that he is, he will opine to her that his oldest son hates him, poor him, yada yada narcissist playbook yada. We will end up arguing where I tell her my mental health has been better since cutting him off and that he deeply hurt someone I love, not to mention my daughter who doesn't understand where the hell grandpa disappeared to and why grandpa won't answer her calls. I have explained this to my grandma over and over. My sister has explained it over and over. It never takes and then she guilts me because she doesn't want to die with a still not talking. Yes she's old and anything can happen, but she's exceptionally healthy and independent. It always ends up heated and I hate it because I have never really argued with my grandma before. So, she's coming up for two weeks for the holiday. I know it's going to come up. Keeping in mind that this woman would give me the shirt off my back if I needed it, I need a good way to maneuver these talks. I don't want to be too firm or mean, but I cannot get into these conversations anymore. She's just so blind to his misdeeds. What do? A user in the comments said, you don't have to argue with your grandmother. Simply say something like, grandma, you know how much I love you appreciate the wisdom of your life experience. I look forward to when I can have back the father I used to have. But until he can act like the man you raised and the man who raised me, I can't have him in my life. It's too painful. Another user said, Grandma, I'm an adult, 
And this is my decision to protect my daughter and myself from my father's unconscionable behavior. My father made his decision and continues to hurt me and those I love. I'm glad that you accept my decision without judgment. I don't wish to discuss the matter any further. Your father's behavior isn't without consequences. He keeps choosing this woman over his son and granddaughter. Refusing even to contact her. Expecting you to continue to submit her and you to this behavior is ridiculous. The next one is titled. Update How Can I, 34M. Get my grandma, 91F. To stop lamenting the fact that I refuse to speak to my lying cheating dad, 62M. Well, I decided to try to use my sister's saying when it came up. She will say, Grandma, I love you, but you're just objectively wrong. Except that with my sister that usually ends the conversation, but it did not with me. My grandma and I have never fought in my entire life. This woman would do anything for me and has done so much and I love her just about as much as you can love another person. But that night, we fought. We were both shouting, and my wife hid herself in her office so she wouldn't have to deal with it. She was essentially blaming my, truly amazing, stepmom for my dad cheating. It ended up with her saying maybe she should just go home, so I yelled at her to go home. I then called my dad, who didn't answer, and left him a message telling him to get her home. Called my sister to vent. Sister talked me down, it took a while, and told me that our grandma is friggin' old and not as there as she once was, and I should go talk to her instead of cutting her out. She said that even if I got grandma to agree with me, it would essentially be forcing a 91-year-old woman to admit to herself that her son is a poss. Because of all the good she has done for me, I went and talked to her. We stayed up until 2 a.m., no shouting, and talked. I told her about some of the abusive things my dad did, and her responses were often, well what did you do to deserve that? Same for abusive stuff he did to my sister. We ended by saying we love each other, and we need to just avoid talking about my dad. Turns out dear old dad has also convinced her that we no longer have family holidays because of me. Because I'm punishing him. My family and I only fly over to visit for either Thanksgiving or Christmas because three plane tickets around the holidays aren't cheap, plus there's coordinating time off work, plus I don't really want to spend vacation time on visiting my hometown twice in two months. So last year I was planning on coming for Christmas, but not Thanksgiving. That was the first time a family holiday didn't happen, and it's because my dad ditched the family to do some things with a client, aka screw his mistress. Since then, the family no longer does anything for the holidays, so I don't fly over. We spend both holidays now with my wife's family who lives two hours away because nothing is going on in my hometown. Yet he convinced her that I caused it. He convinced her that me being NC with him isn't for my mental health but to punish him. He equated his relationship with his mistress to my relationship with my wife. And she bought it. I've concluded that, at her age, nothing is going to change. Her son could murder one of her other kids and she would find a way to justify it. Just the day after I told her all the stuff he has done, she was crazy trying to buy him a nice Christmas gift and making sure it was perfect. I've just accepted that this is how she apparently is. But I feel completely different about her now. I feel like all of my memories with her are tarnished. She was screaming at me in defense of my abuser. This is the same woman who cut contact with her own abusive mother. If you asked me a week ago who I think the best person in the world is, I would have said her. I really saw her as a mother. Now I can't. It's just not the same and I'm very depressed about it. My wife has been supportive, but I almost feel like I lost another parent, my mother is dead and obviously my dad, and I are NC. It's like this huge loss, yet she's still here until Thursday. We are getting along fine, cooked together, joke together, etc. But I'm honestly glad I'm going back to work on Wednesday. Any advice on how to deal with this feeling would be helpful. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.